Hi guys, welcome to paradise. Have I found paradise? I'm going to show you in this video. To be honest, I'd never heard of this island before and I only found it by mistake when I was looking at Google Maps. So first I'm going to show you on the map where it's located so you can get an idea. Looking at the Philippines, you can see the island here with the red pin. It's just off Negros Oriental. I'll zoom in closer so you can get a better look. It's just a tiny little island covering 16 hectares. So it's easy just to walk around the entire island. The front cove area is where all the cottages are set up, but I'll show more of this in a moment. The closest major city is Bacolod. From there you can catch a bus and then a tricycle to the pier. For me, I organise a transfer with the resort directly and they picked me up from the hotel in Bacolod to the pier. It took about an hour and a half to the pier. These were the costs of the transfers when I did it. At the pier itself, you pay for your ferry ticket and entry fees to the island. At the time, it was 400 peso. This is the boat schedule when I went. Okay, so you're cashless on the island, so you buy a card to pay for everything. So this is the card you get to pay for things on the island as you go. Mostly you'll use it at the restaurant for food. You can top up the card, but you have to go to reception to do this. I did find this a little bit annoying, as you don't know how much you're going to spend, so I ended up having to go back and top it up with more cash. For me, I just like to settle my account at the end when I check out. It's just so much easier. I can see this card system benefits more the resort than the actual customer. You can also use a credit card on the island, but if you travelled in the Philippines before, those point of sale machines are unreliable, particularly in the province. At the pier, there's six steps prior to getting on the island. I found it a little bit unnecessary, like red tape, as it's just one little island with one tiny resort on it. I didn't think you need all these steps. Anyhow, when that was all paid, the driver then drove me down the pier as far as it could, and I walked over to the boat. And you can just see how close the island really is when you're walking along this pier. On the day I went, the water was a little choppy, so the ride was a little bumpy. And when that happens, if you're at the front of the boat, you're gonna get a little bit wet. Most of the passengers you see on the boat were day trippers. Here you'll see the first glimpse of the beautiful island. The front beach is just amazing. Although it did have a barge to one side when I arrived, I'm not sure why they docked it on this part of the island. It was a real eyesore. The beach, the colours of the waters, it's just gorgeous. Picture perfect, except obviously for that barge and that was only temporary while I was there. Everything looked on this beach amazing. I could just go through a list of synonyms for gorgeous, stunning, sublime, beautiful, and they all would describe this beach perfectly. Certainly a wow factor here. And I can just imagine Instagrammers would be in heaven on this beach. Unfortunately, there is no Wi-Fi on the island. So on the beach, there's a number of open air cottages. This is where the day trippers come and rent out these. There's quite a number of various size cottages here. As I was here during midweek, you can see it's fairly quiet. Weekends would be busy. If you want to try out one of their water sports, this is where you can hire them out. And if I just stayed here, I'd probably say this was paradise until you see some of the other things on the island. And I'll get to that in a sec. I was here in late January, so it's not the peak season. This is most definitely the best part of the island. Then there's other parts of the island, which makes the island lose a bit of its shine. The back beach particularly is like out of sight, out of mind. The winds this time of year were blowing flotsam and jetsam onto this side of the island. It was just horrible and dirty with seaweed and rubbish. There was no attempt of cleaning this area. It was just like a rubbish tip. They even have cottages right near here. I just thought surely this must be better maintained. I mean, it's just a tiny island. So there was a big contrast of night and day between one side of the island to the other. Then walking down this side of the beach, there was this area where they just dumped plastic bottles in piles, just in plain sight. Obviously it'll get moved at a later stage, but it's just something anyone can walk past who's staying at the island. And really it's inexcusable to have something like this out in full sight like that. The northern part of the island is quite nice, although it was a bit open and windy at this time. It was a nice contrast to the other parts of the island, and it had some beautiful views looking out 
over to some islands in the distance and those amazing tropical waters. Back at the main beach, just left of the pier, if you're coming onto the island, is the beach bar for a nice cold one to relax by this amazing beach. Prices are shown on screen. Sit back at one of the tables and enjoy the beautiful views. This is also the side you can see the sunsets. Again, it's just beautiful. And it's just a perfect time to come out here at this time of day as it's cooler and you can soak in the serenity of the island or that laid back island life feel. I did also try out the time lapse with the sunset. Mind you, I didn't stay during the weekend, so I'm sure that ambience would be a lot different. For food, there's a few options, starting with the grilling station, pick from seafood or other meats. Price is shown at the time I stayed. I do love barbecue food. I have a chicken leg and squid, one squid. How much is a chicken leg? Uh, 200, sir. 200? So I had the chicken leg, squid, and scallops which came to a total of 798 peso. It tasted delicious, but it was pricey. Breakfast was pretty ordinary. I was able to swap the rice for the toast. I felt the menu in the restaurant was a bit limited from a foreigner point of view anyhow. The food I had overall was okay, but nothing to get excited over. One lunch they had set up trays with various dishes. And again, this was okay. At the restaurant there's also a fridge where you can get ice creams and cakes. There's a burger station, serving up obviously burgers but also pizzas. Unfortunately the Hawaiian pizza was unavailable for both nights that I stayed. So let's look at some of the rooms and the prices. When I was looking to book this I could only book directly with the resort and it went through PayPal but everything ran smoothly. When looking for room rates I couldn't find anything available on third party sites so I was only able to find it on the resort's own website. I want to show you a few things. First, the floating bar, which unfortunately, when I was there, was still under maintenance, so I couldn't try it out. It was the one thing that I really wanted to check out, unfortunately. Anyhow, they also offer a spa, although I didn't use this. They have a number of different rooms on offer. Their website goes into more details of each of these rooms, as well as prices. I stayed in their Premier Suite A room. When looking at their prices, this room type was going for 8,481 peso. So is it worth that much? Let's take a look. And just before we do that, here's some of the other room prices. At the front of the room, there's a terrace with chairs and table. It's a decent sized room with two beds. One is a king and one is a queen. Their linens have a 300 thread count. The beds are comfortable enough. There's cable TV, mini bar, there's a wardrobe with safe, although you can see the safe is quite small when you compare it to my laptop, it's a 15 inch laptop. The bathroom was okay, but it was shown a bit of age. It was a decent size, complete with gels and shampoos. Overall, the room was okay. Was it worth the 8,500 a night? Definitely not. So to sum up my experience here, beautiful island, but average resort. As far as the money card goes, I found it was a bit inconvenient. I understand the resort wanted to be cash free as it's a lot easier for them. But coming from a guest point of view, I found it was a bit annoying. I wasn't sure how much I was gonna spend on the island. So I had to go back to reception and top it up again. Then at the end, I had to get a refund on the balance remaining. I rather just sort everything out at the end and pay the bill then. It was a little bit inconvenient. It just feels like it's run by people without a hospitality background because it's just little things that shouldn't be happening in a resort like this and it just brings it down a little bit. You know when you have a beautiful location, beautiful resort, it's like a marriage made in heaven. But here it's beautiful location, average resort, just doesn't click as much. It's a pity really because it's such a gorgeous location, particularly the front beach. Is it paradise? Nearly. Kind of feels like it's just missed the mark a bit. This place has so much potential. Maybe they'll get it right with a growing page. You learn your mistakes and improve on them. Let's hope. So would I come back again? Well, I probably wouldn't just come to this place just to see the island. If I was in the area, I think it's definitely worth a side trip 
either for overnight or a day trip. I probably wouldn't stay two days though. I felt that was, I was getting a bit of itchy feet by then. Thank you so much for watching. For more travel videos and reviews, please subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you next time. Stay safe, cheers.